Hello and welcome to the Habit Coach podcast. I am Ashton Doctor, your Habit Coach, and today we're going to be talking about a very important topic. We're going to be talking about positivity. Now there's so much negativity in the world around us and I was just on an Instagram live where three people asked me about negativity turning into positivity and I said hold on next week there's a podcast coming out where we're going to be talking about this so we have an expert with us Kristen Butler who's going to talk to us about positivity Kristen welcome to the Habit Coach podcast Yeah thank you so much for having me I'm excited Me too Kristen how did you get involved in this whole world of positivity what what has been your journey to this Yeah, you know, I think I always was kind of an optimistic child, but um going through uh difficulties a decade and a half ago and hitting rock bottom really showed me that there is so much power in positivity because I literally rebuilt my life using positivity as a foundation. And so I was just over the moon with how successful it was for me that I just wanted to share it with other people because um where I was was such a low place and I was confident that anyone could use positive thinking and a positive lifestyle to turn their life around. So you as a child you were primarily positive you were primarily negative what was your mindset when you were a child? I felt like I was a very optimistic child and kind of like saw life through rose-colored glasses. I had a lot of dreams and goals and but you know outside voices people would say you know you're too loud you're too much you know you're you're too happy you know it was just a too much little girl and i kind of took those labels on and then in my 20s it was like who who was i at that point you know i wasn't being myself anymore and then when i truly started aligning with who i was and accepting myself my life started to change and is this a tough journey is it a difficult journey because i know so many people right now are at that rock bottom moment right and when you are at rock bottom you just cannot think that there is something that can be better than this yeah my rock bottom was being in bed for 2 weeks straight literally wow. i was um just so depressed so down feeling so stuck that i didn't even want to get up to brush my teeth to eat nothing like but it was a journey getting there of just constantly force forcing myself and pushing um like pushing my limits and so i hit i had many bouts of burnout before that and i just didn't listen i just kept going and kept going and kept going till i literally couldn't go anymore and yeah it was a very dark place i think rock bottom is different for everyone but the feelings are the same that hopelessness feeling like you know i might as well i'm worthless i might as well give up why am i even here it's a it's a very dark place but it can also have the potential to you know completely bring us to our best moments and why we're even here so i mean it's really what you do with it when you're there i think it's that when you're right down there if you don't have a support system sometimes it becomes very hard if you don't have the right kind of information coming to you it becomes super hard to do anything about that rock bottom moment was yeah, there a absolutely. spark that 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 came in your life that changed all of this that changed the way that you were thinking about life you know i uh, i had been reported by a loved one for my uh, you know suicidalish thoughts and so when i was admitted to the hospital you know i had an evaluation and they said you know you need to see a therapist and When I went to the therapist, I I didn't really know what to expect, but um what she said to me was really life-changing because she said, "You know, you actually need to be yourself more. You've listened to oh, wow. all these outside yeah, you need to be who you are and own that and be okay with that. And you've been listening to all these outside voices and trying to live in the way that they want you to." you need to live in the way that you need to live for who you are and it was really life changing for me because i didn't realize i was a people pleaser and that i was accepting all these outside labels and you know listening and and acting in accordance so it was really life changing for me to say wow i matter and what i want to do matters and let me follow that voice cuz maybe i know what i need and maybe it's more than what other people think i need that's so interesting because we're constantly trying to people please like you said how do we get into that 
how do, how do we move from this place of you know outward focus to something that is inward focused like you know understanding who you are i think that's one of the toughest things that people actually tell you right you, know, you have to know who you are and then we have all these inner child things and how where, where does this entire process start you know, I, I think that we have inner needs and external needs. So our inner needs mm. is the way we foster self-care and mm. our external needs are the ways that we create boundaries with other people. And I think it's an inner and outer balance that we need to have to really live in a way that feels good. This balance between what your inner world is and what's happening outside. How do you understand positivity now, right? After going through this entire journey, when I say the word positivity, what are the thoughts that come to your mind? You know, um, mindset shifts, having pure positive emotions, you know, of course we have our down moments, but working through our emotions in a way that's healthy, that brings us back to gratitude, back to love, back to appreciation. And, and then also living our life and our lifestyle in accordance with positivity. So, you know, taking care of ourselves, going for a walk, you know, um, connecting with people that we love. Um, there's just so many ways that we can foster positivity beyond our thinking. And when we start putting positivity in action, that's when we truly see our lives change. You know, it's, it's good to reprogram your thoughts. And that's really the first stage. That's the foundation, um, for yourself to feel more positive, truly, authentically feel more positive. But then taking that and putting it into action is just taking it to the next level and, and being a positive person. You know, as a habit coach, I keep telling people this, right? Our habits are not just the actions that we take every day, but the thoughts that we have every day as well. And the quality of our life depends on the quality of the thoughts that we bring into it. Like you're saying, you know, that the entire aspect of pos positivity around it. What are the different elements of positivity? Are there different ways that we can start thinking about positivity? Wow, there's so many. I mean, hmm. I think just in every area of our life, if we feel stuck, think about how can I think about this differently? Because oftentimes we're stuck because our thoughts and beliefs have us stuck about our reality, about who we are. And when we start examining, like, how do I really feel about myself? And how do I want to feel about myself? It's such a shift because oftentimes inside we're holding on to very negative emotions. When I was at rock bottom, I was very negative about who I was and I was rejecting myself really. And when we can start thinking about ourselves in a more positive way, we can start thinking about other people in a more positive way and start feeling more grateful um, about them and what they're doing for us rather than, you know, complaining or feeling like they're not enough. When we feel like we're enough, we're going to see other people as enough. And you work with a lot of people with regards to coaching and positivity. And what are some of the pitfalls that you see? What are the stumbling blocks that you see when people are trying to be more positive or change their mindset from this negative outlook to something more positive? Yeah, I think that that's a really great question. I feel like maybe they set too big of a goal or expectation and think it's this big thing they need to work on when really it's just these small little steps each day. Um, you know, like I talk about in my book, you know, waking up and doing a gratitude list. Um, because for me, when I first started doing a gratitude list, I would write down 10 things and I thought, ah, oh, what, how is this really going to help me? Maybe I'm wasting my time. But over the years, it's now ingrained in me where I wake up and I just feel positive and I, and I, really savor those feelings so it's not something i have to do it's something i want to do that i feel good about it's just natural and comes you know like with practice with everything if we can build these habits around positive thinking they just become who we are so this positive thinking like you're saying many people are now saying that you know ashton you can't look at everything positively right positivity is not realistic in life I'm not an I'm not a pessimist. I'm not an optimist. I'm a realist. What are your thoughts on these three different definitions? That's a great question. I I think that there's a perspective in all three of those areas that you just described, and it's the one you choose to take. 
So for me, um, when something happens, even in a negative situation, I have a choice to choose that perspective or I can look at the positive. Oftentimes, I've actually, in my healing journey, had to go back to old memories where I, I was holding on to a negative perspective and I needed a breakthrough. I was stuck in a place, um, you know, even for example, doing these, this podcast, I was stuck in public speaking and, and turning on a camera and listening to my own voice. And so I actually had to go back and do healing around events that happened when I was a child that I took on a negative perspective. And we, you know, I would work with the, it was called RTT, Marissa Peer's RTT. And, um, we thought about how can we look at this memory in a different way? Because I was actually holding on to a very negative perspective when there were many perspectives I could have taken. And so I think that we have that choice and it's really up to us, but it's so empowering to choose that positive perspective because it's always gonna be there. Might not be the easiest perspective to take, but it's the healthiest, I think. Um, I'm not saying to ignore your emotions. It's so healthy to process your emotions, but then come out of that so you don't stay stuck in the negativity. You know, like you were saying that these are programmings that we had as children, you know, some experience that we had that we're holding on to now. And, uh, and we used our child's brain to try and make sense of it back then. And as an adult, when we revisit it, we have these aha moments and these realizations that maybe those belief systems are completely wrong. And maybe we need to rethink those. Um, you were talking about public speaking. Did you have a moment about public speaking as a child that that, that scarred you to now go, go back and heal it? Yeah, I had so many of them, actually. And <laughs> when I went back, I was like, wow, like that, I... I had a perspective of, you know, no one wants to listen to me. I'm too loud or no one's here to support me or they don't care what I have to say. And that's not true. And so that was really holding me back. And I, I didn't realize it was in my subconscious. And, you know, research shows that, you know, when you're a child, you're actually programming your subconscious and then it's just on repeat. And so I was repeating these feelings and I would, they would come up, but I wouldn't really know where they were from. So it's really all about perspective. And if we can be intentional as adults about our perspective, we can really prevent, I think, um, more trauma, you know, to ourselves and negativity if we can try to be as intentional about positivity as possible, right? You know, not perfectionism, but um, there's just so much value there. And when we talk about, you know, I'm a realist, right? Like I was talking about. People say that you can't be positive about everything. You have to fake it. Do you have to fake positivity or is it something else that you have to do? Yeah, I don't think that you want to fake positivity. That's like stuffing down emotions. And when I did that, that's where I got to rock bottom. It was only after I would peel those emotions out and take a look at them and then accept them like, okay, this is how I was feeling, but well, how do I want to feel? And so mm. I think that you can really be a realist even in that because you're choosing your own experience and from that place healing. Makes a big difference, right? Yeah. Um, Kristen, what were some of the emotions that came as a shock to you in this? Because, you know, when we normally talk to people about emotions, they think, oh, happy, sad, good, bad. Good, bad are not emotions at all, but still we think about them as emotions. Um, they can't go beyond four emotions, five emotions. What were some of the interesting ones that bubbled up for you that you said, aha, this is interesting. How do I turn this into positivity? Yeah, when I was at rock bottom, I hated myself. I was, um, I hated how I looked. I hated that I wasn't where I wanted to be and it was a really dark place and even today I'm like I don't even like to use the word hate because there's so many other words that you can use to describe an uncomfortable situation or a challenge and I don't go back to rock bottom places because I feel like I'm very intentional about my words. So there was also, you know, fears of rejection and um self-loathing there was just so many i at a rock bottom place there's just so many negative emotions right um and even today i have to watch if i go through a challenge that i don't you know beat myself up or pose shame on myself for um going through something because we're in a 
a world of duality and there's going to be ups and downs. And so when you know that, you can kind of navigate and know that things are going to get better from that place. And that's the thing, right? We have to know that things can get better. Like whatever you're doing right now, there is always a better thing, maybe just the head, maybe around the bend. When you're working with people, how do you show them that it could get better? Because this is where I think many people begin their journey saying that, oh, can it be possible? Yeah, that's that's a really great question. I think having faith, for me, having faith and trusting in that process and knowing that you're enough and things can get better. I think sometimes people feel like um, they're not enough or that they don't deserve for things to get better or that life is not rigged in our favor, that life is really um, out to get us. And so just trusting, even if you don't know what's going to happen, because oftentimes we don't know what's going to happen. And in that control of wanting to know, we create so much resistance. So just having that faith and knowing that each step forward could lead you into a better direction and taking that action even if it's a small habit like gratitude or eating healthier, even drinking more water, um, connecting more with people you care about. There's just so many ways that we can move ourselves into a healthier direction. So having that mindset shift of faith and trust and then maybe taking those small action steps towards where you want to feel or where you want to go. You just mentioned a few amazing habits about around positivity. Um, what are your top five favorite ones? And can we deep dive a little bit into each of them? Wow, that's really, I never thought about that. My top five, I would say definitely gratitude is for sure. Number one. How, what, what, um, what is gratitude for you? Why, does, why is gratitude so important? I think that gratitude is important because we're thanking life for what we have. I think that most of us are pretty um, blessed with either just just enough to make it each day, right? It depends on our situation, but even at rock bottom when I felt like I had nothing, at least I had a bed to sleep on, right? At least I had one person that I could say cared about me, Um, even though I had more, right? But in that place, I didn't feel like I had anybody. I didn't feel like I had anything. Or it could even just be, hey, the breath that I just took. I just took that breath, I'm here. You know, when we start thinking our life for the small things as we can work up to even the bigger things. Right. Um, and so it really changed my life. And I think maybe that's why I'm so, um, grateful literally for gratitude because it is a magical and easy habit that you can adopt. And what is your practice? How many things do you write that you're grateful for each day? Is it a structured approach? When I first started, it was a structured approach. You know, I had um, a notebook and then I even got like one of those gratitude boxes that you could write a note and kind of put inside. Um, any, And I would set it out where I could see it every day so I didn't forget. And it took time to make it a routine. Um, but it was something that I felt like, okay, I have to do. Um, I don't want to forget about doing it. But eventually it got to a point where it was a habit and it just, it was ingrained in me. I just went and did it. And then over the years, now it's become literally, I just wake up and I'm like, oh, I'm grateful for the sun. I'm grateful for the mountains. I live in the mountains. You know, I'm grateful for my daughters. I'm grateful for my husband. You know, I'm grateful for this cozy bed. You know, it just feels it's, it's been embedded in me and it's like just part of me now, but it took, definitely took, you know, almost a decade to get to that place, but it's a very, um, beautiful place to be. And I think it really sets the tone for the morning. So, you know, when people are talking about gratitude, they have this worry that it becomes mechanical after a while. Right. Mm -hmm. So I wake up in the morning and I thank my parents. I wake up in the morning and thank my children. I wake up in the morning and I, right. There is that the intention behind the gratitude practice has disappeared because it becomes very, very robotic or monotonous. How do you make the gratitude practice interesting and, you know, maintain it that way? I think it's just savoring that feeling. When you're feeling that feeling, it just feels so blissful that it's easy to maintain because it's better than waking up and saying like, oh, my back hurts. You know, I recently hurt my back. I didn't wake up and say, oh, my back hurts, you know, and focus there. And then when I'm focusing on it, it's hurting more and, you know, and I'm in that feeling. So Mm. um, it's like, 
oh, I'm healing a little bit more today. That feels good, you know. It's just noticing and then savoring it, like truly feeling that feeling. And when you do that, it's not, not something you want to forget doing, right? Because it's much better to feel good than to feel awful. Like I tell people, like, what choice do you have apart from feeling good? Why would you want to choose anything else apart from feeling good? Yeah, exactly. When you know the feeling, then you're going to want to do that. I mean, we naturally do that. It's just what are our habits, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so gratitude is one habit for you. What is the second one? Mm, I think creating a win list. I love creating a win list. And I do that on a daily basis, but it doesn't always have to be big things. It can just be, you know, little things like, hey, I exercised or I called my dad or, um, or, or sometimes it is big things like, hey, I was featured in this, you know, uh, media or article or, you know, I celebrate the big things and the small things because more big things happen if I celebrate the small things on a daily basis, a day that may feel like just an average day, you know, hey, the sun was out. I went out and took 15 minutes and basked in the sun, you know, it can be very little things, but I've learned that the more I focus on the little things, the bigger things that I get. Lovely. Like I had Kristen Buttle on my podcast. Woohoo. Big things. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, so put these you. wins down into your into your journal. So write down these wins every day that at the end of the day, do you prefer them at the end of the day? Yeah. Or I do think you prefer in the morning kind of... for the previous day? Yeah. In the morning, I think making a little bit of like a priority list. I like to do that. So I stay focused on what I'm doing. And then, hey, if I do that thing, it goes on my win list at the end of the day. Um, but I love thinking about my wins at the end of the day because it just helps me to sleep better. It's kind of like, oh, you know, um, you did what you said you were going to do, or this really cool thing happened. You know, it's just kind of like reflecting in a very like positive way. Nice. Okay. So, so the first one is gratitude. The second one is have a wins list, all the things that went well, fantastic. Yay. Celebrate. What is the third habit that you really enjoy for, you know, building positivity? I think affirmations are definitely um, at the top of my list as well, because I think we're always telling ourselves affirmations, you know, it's just whether it's positive or negative. And when I started taking out those negative belief systems that I had about myself that I would repeat in my head over and over, not even realizing it, and I started looking at it and intentionally saying, well, what do I want to say to myself? How do I want to feel like? about this or myself or about my situation. And when I started changing those beliefs with more positive affirmations, and I really like um, Louise Hay's work on this, she's really brilliant with the mirror work and everything, that again took my life to another level where I started actually loving myself. And I had never really done that before because I thought it was selfish to love yourself and love your life. but. We need to so that we can love other people and be there for them. Yeah, what, what you just said is so powerful that very often we think about putting ourselves first as selfish, right? I know I speak to so many women, especially because this is something that we've been trained out of, right? So if I put myself first, it's selfish. I have to put, for example, if I have a family, I have to put my family first. All these things come across very strongly. Um, Putting yourself first is a great form of, I think, respecting yourself, if nothing else, right? Oh, I love that. Exactly. Respecting yourself because this is your body. And if you're not taking care of it, you can't take, you know, you can't deliver your purpose here. You can't take care of your family. You can't, you know, do work optimally. You're just like, you need to recharge yourself. It's just like part of why we're here is to take care of ourselves so we can live a long, healthy life. Okay, so that was Kristen Butler and we were talking about positivity. Now, this is just part one. Make sure you stay and stick around for part two coming up shortly. I'm Ashton Doctor, your habit coach.